Honestly, I don't get that many questions anymore about weed control issues in canola, um, mostly because I think the weeds are being controlled either with Roundup or Liberty primarily. However, I do expect to start to see more challenges with weeds in canola uh, in, in large part due to resistance. And I do think there's some things that we need to be thinking about so that uh, we're not setting ourselves up for weed or uh, resistance issues in canola. And I'm gonna be talking about a few of those things. If I can get my, okay. So <clears throat> kochia, I'm gonna talk a little bit about kochia because I see that as a problem that's looming. Uh, it's certainly an issue in soybeans and other crops. Roundup resistant kochia is quite spread throughout the state and this is not an uncommon site. Another one of the challenges we're seeing is uh, obviously we've relied heavily on Roundup to control kochia for years and we've got resistance to that. We're also starting to see uh, a chink in the armor or break in the armor of starring. In this picture you can see on the right the top growth has been stopped by the starane, but then we've got a branch coming out the side. On the plant here on the left, we see the same thing, a large branch starting to grow out on the side. So <clears throat> kochia is uh, going to be a challenge to control because we no longer can control it with just Roundup or starane. A product I want to uh, talk about, I'm not pushing this product, but I'm going to be talking about this product and a couple others. But the, the main reason I'm bringing this up is we need to be able to control kochia in the crop preceding canola. And usually, or very commonly, wheat might be the crop that uh, comes in front of canola. And Husky FX is a new product from Bayer. It has, the, the reason why I think it will be beneficial to us is because it has three modes of action that are effective on kochia, bromoxanil, pyrosulfatol, and fluoroxapir. So basically it's husky plus starane. It'll be applied at 13 and a half to 18 ounces up to flag emergence. Of course, this is a wheat product, will control most broadleaf weeds. And it has, in some trials that we've done, it has been quite effective on kochia. One of the things I want to warn about though, it does contain a star, a reduced starring rate. It contains the equivalent of 0.18 to 0.24 pints of starring ultra. In comparison, Gold Sky has the equivalent of 0.27 pints of starring ultra. Uh, ideally, I think we would rather be up to about 0.36 pints equivalent of starring ultra is the rate that we would want to have. So, you know, consider this product and others. For example, uh, Talonor plus Starane, which also has three modes of action, uh, bicyclopyrone plus bromoxanil and fluoroxapir, uh, something like a Koshivore clean sweep, 2,4-D, bromoxanil, fluoroxapir. But always consider uh, maybe throwing in a little bit of extra Starane in, in the tank uh, to get that stirring rate up so that we're not uh, allowing any of those weeds to go to seed. The Husky FX, uh, the only product or crop we have to worry about for rotation restrictions in North Dakota would be lentil at 18 months. With canola, we're at nine months, so shouldn't be an issue. So I'm just bringing this up uh, for uh, for consideration of products that have multiple modes of action to help us control kochia uh, that's Roundup resistant. Okay, um, in general for weed control in canola, I kind of see two scenarios. One where we've got conventional tillage. Uh, you might come in with a spring tillage and then plant your crop and 
come in post-emergence with one shot of Liberty or maybe a split application of Roundup. In no-till, uh, you might come in with a Roundup burn down and then again, a post-Liberty uh, application or a split application of Roundup. Although these are not the only products that we have registered for canola, uh, we still have the old Treflan Sonalan. I know those are not used a lot, but they still do work and they still provide a different mode of action. So Treflan Sonalan would be used most likely in, in a conventional tillage situation. And they would provide suppression of kochia and some other weeds. We do have uh, Beyond in Clearfield Canola and Draft in SU Canola. Now, of course, these are group two products which will not control canola, or excuse me, will not control kochia. So that's one of the main reasons maybe that those uh, traits are not used as much because there are a couple of weaknesses, especially with kochia and maybe uh, wild buckwheat. So in Roundup Ready Canola, uh, the, the original Roundup Ready, we could use a lower rate of Roundup with the Roundup Original. Uh, we used to go a pint and a pint uh, with the uh, Power Max, it was uh, which we could apply up to a 0.56 pounds AE or 16 fluid ounces of Power Max. The max in crop rate was uh, 22 ounces of, of Power Max. Now we have the True Flex Roundup Ready, uh, wh where we can apply a max total emergence through six leaf. We can apply up to a one and a half pounds AE or equivalent to about 44 fluid ounces of Power Max. Now we can apply Power Max in the six leaf to one to first flower stage, but hopefully we are never needing to apply that late. We'd always want to get preferably the, our two applications on before six leaf. And we, we can't apply more than two ap in-crop applications. For Liberty Link Canola, of course, we uh, always apply with AMS, 22 to 29 fluid ounces. Obviously going to prefer the 29 ounces for better weed control. We do have max in-crop total of 58 or season total of 87. And part of this is because we, Liberty can be applied pre-plant or pre to uh, before the crop is up. However, I would think that we would maybe prefer not to just because we don't want to overuse the Liberty. Ideally, I think we would rather use something else in a burn down situation so that we're not using Liberty pre-plant and pre-emergence or pre-plant or pre-emergence and then a couple more times in crop. Mainly for thinking of resistance issues, we don't want to overuse the product because Liberty gives us decent weed control now and we want to maintain it and not have resistance development. So if we can ideally use it mostly just in crop, use other products, pre-plant or pre, that would be ideal. As you're well aware, Liberty works best with a lot of sun, heat and humidity, making it more effective. One of the challenges with Liberty though are the grasses, but Liberty can work on grasses, especially when they're small. If we wait till wild oat is four or five leaf, we're not gonna get it with Liberty. If uh, same with, even with uh, some foxtails, we have to get the grasses when they're smaller. Now, what I would maybe recommend is always uh, consider tank mixing Liberty with Select or Clethodim and uh, using a, preferably a full rate of, of clethodim. We also have options of the stack trait canola, which is the Roundup and Liberty together, the traits together in the same variety. 
the pros and cons, the pros would certainly be that you could spray Liberty in one pass and then Roundup in the next pass. Given that uh, Roundup has some weaknesses, of course, Roundup resistant kochia, Roundup resistant horseweed, mallow, wild buckwheat, maybe some others. Liberty's weaknesses would be grasses, especially the larger grasses, lamb's quarters, uh, larger broadleaves, uh, environmental conditions where we have low sunlight, low humidity, low temperatures. So this is a situation where having the option of spraying Liberty or Roundup may be a benefit. The cons of course would be if you're uh, wanting, if you're not wanting to deal with Roundup Ready volunteers, uh, then if you don't want to deal with the Roundup Ready volunteers, then you maybe just go with the Liberty Link. But I do think in general, it would be, it's good to alternate between a Roundup and Liberty variety occasionally so that we're not always using the same uh, mode of action in our Liberty, in our canola crop. Okay, I want to address uh, individual weeds. Uh, horseweed is a challenge for us throughout the state now because it, we do have a lot of Roundup resistance in the horseweed population. So in a burn down situation, uh, we, if we use Roundup and I put an asterisk here because obviously resistant weeds are possible, could tank mix with a product like AIM. I don't have real strong confidence that we're going to control a Roundup resistant plant with just Roundup and AIM. We could also uh, consider a Gramoxone or a Liberty burn down if we have to. Liberty Link canola in crop, we would definitely want to apply, make these applications on the horseweed when they are small, preferably in the rosette stage or very early bolting stage, using Liberty preferably at 29 ounces. Another option would be Stinger post emergence. In Roundup Ready canola, of course, we can use Roundup, but we may have some resistance there, may have to consider Stinger as an option. For Kochia, very similar situation, uh, similar options with Roundup and AIM, Gramoxone, Liberty, and a Burndown. Liberty, in crop Liberty Link canola, again, Liberty at 29 ounces. Th where I would draw the line with Kochia and, and Liberty is three inches. In my experience, when we get it to four inches or greater, we start to lose control with Liberty. And so I'm going to advise you to be a, a, trying to make your applications when, when the kochia is three inches or smaller. There, there's something about kochia, once it gets about four inches tall, it's hard to control. Plus we start to get more shading of other, pl of other plants that are uh, underneath the canopy. And so I would suggest you target three inches for kochia. And then of course in Roundup Ready Canola, our only option would be Roundup and hopefully you don't have Roundup resistance there. In the Eastern part of the state, you might be dealing with water hemp. The question I would have is when you're planting canola uh, and spraying canola is the, uh, in a burn down, is the water hemp, has the water hemp emerged yet? It may, it may not. Water hemp can emerge at various times of the year. Uh, Roundup generally probably won't control water hemp. Most likely it's Roundup resistant. Uh, some AIM might also give us a little bit of burn down help there. Again, uh, Gramoxone or Liberty might be options in a burn down. Similar to Kochia in Liberty Link in crop, 29 ounces spraying three inch water hemp. And then Roundup Ready Canola, Roundup may or may not be an option depending on if you've got resistance. Other tough weeds, uh, marsh elder. Fortunately, uh, these are generally controlled easily by Roundup, Liberty or Stinger. Common ragweed, which very well may be glyphosate resistant, especially in the Eastern part of the state. However, Liberty and Stinger are generally effective. Canada thistle, usually not 
a, a difficult challenge with Roundup or Stinger in crop. With wild oat, uh, obviously Roundup will control it. And if we are using a livery link crop, we definitely want to consider a tank mix with a full rate of, of select or a clethodim and preferably applying prior to uh, tillering of that wild oat. I'm going to enter, uh, talk to you about one product that may be an option in some cases. This, I, I don't expect this product to be used in canola very much at this point. But the main reason I, I bring up this product is because it does have some horseweed activity. So if you are in a, a, an area where you horseweed, Roundup resistant horseweed is a challenge. And so maybe uh, Roundup isn't a great option for a burn down. Elevore is, contains the active ingredient haloxifen. It's a group four growth regulator applied at one ounce uh, tank. Uh, you'll add an adjuvant MSO or COC. The target is burn down of emerged broadleaf weeds. And the timing on the label as it currently stands is it must be applied 14 days pre-plant to canola. Now, our neighbors to the north can apply this up to planting, but our this Elevore label will only allow a 14 day pre-plant to canola. These are the weeds that are listed on the label as controlled. Horseweed would be, I think, the, the biggest one uh, that would be interested in. Uh, weed suppressed, buckwheat and kochia. Uh, but uh, again, I, I think this one would be, horseweed would be the, our main target. How many guys are gonna go out and spray Elevore 14 days pre-plant to canola? Probably not very many. Uh, maybe the only situation where this might be used is if you're, there are some guys that might be planting a little bit later in the month of May, or maybe, maybe even into June this might be where this could be used. Just talking about in general, the weed resistance issue. Uh, the reason I bring this up is obviously we know that there are some short rotations out there, uh, such as canola wheat, canola wheat, or uh, where we have uh, canola being planted every other year. And right now, Obviously the Liberty and Vigor varieties are very uh, popular for various reasons, but if we're applying Liberty every other year in canola, I'm concerned about developing resistance to Liberty. And the reason I bring this up is because we've seen this before, uh, previous experience show that it took about an average of seven years for resistance to, to develop in, in kochia where a grower did, or growers uh, had soybean and wheat in rotation. So they just went soybean, wheat, soybean, wheat, soybean, wheat. And about seven years after into that soybean, wheat, continuous rotation, we developed uh, Roundup resistance. And so we don't want to see that in a rotation with our Liberty. We want to protect that Liberty trait so that it remains effective for us. So that's why I, I also suggest uh, where, where you can, um, you know, maybe not going with the canola every other year or at a minimum changing up the, the herbicides that you're using uh, in that canola crop or changing up the traits. Okay, I'm gonna switch gears to canola desiccation. Uh, there's maybe a few that are still uh, desiccating. And, and I just want to review some of the things that we learned in some of the studies that we did from uh, desiccating. And th this picture shows Diquat or, or Reglone. This was three days after application compared to on the right, the untreated. Now, as far as staging, uh, when's the proper time for application? So we know that the canola crop um, develops and matures from the, from the bottom up. 
So these, these pods on the far right, this group of, of pods here are from the bottom pods, or these are the bottom pods. Then these are the middle pods here in the middle, and these are the top pods. And so obviously the seeds develop and mature earliest in those bottom pods. So when is the, the right time for applying that desiccant? That, that, uh, so at this stage right here on July 27, this would be too early to be applying a desiccant. On August 1st, you see these middle pods, the seeds in the middle pods have, have started to turn and maybe a couple of uh, seeds in, in the top third of the plant are, have started as well. And then by August 7, six, only six days later, we, we've got uh, seeds have all turned. Now, the, the US label for Reglone or Diquat differs somewhat from the Canadian label. The, the labels used to read that, that you, it, it would recommend applying the desiccant at about 70% seed color turn. So right here you'd be, this would be close to, you know, two thirds of the, of the seeds have started to turn. So this would be the minimum, the minimal stage where you would be applying the desiccant. The US label now does not specify even when to apply it, when to apply the desiccant, when to apply Reglone. The Canadian label actually reads now 90, at 90% 90 color change. And so when 90% of these seeds have started to turn, so that has changed over the years. So our, our recommendation previously has been uh, that at a minimum, uh, the, the seeds in, in the middle pods need to have started to turn and preferably some in the top pods. So probably in that 70 to 90% uh, color change ranges is, is when you need to be applying uh, the desiccant. But again, the, the US label doesn't specify, but the Canadian label does say 90% color change. In summary from the uh, trials we conducted a number of years ago, applying the desiccant before seeds in the middle pods had turned color resulted in higher green count, lower yield and lower test weight. So we, we have to wait till uh, those, those seeds in the middle pods and some in the top pods have started to turn color before applying the desiccant. And obviously whether you swath or, or excuse me, whether you applied the desiccant or you swath too early cause similar results. For a harvest comparison, uh, we had minimal seed loss due to shattering at seven or 14 days after treatment. So applying the desiccant uh, didn't really ca we cause a lot of seed shattering or pod drop for us in, in the seven years that we conducted these trials. In general, when we conduct, when we uh, measured seed loss, we generally lost less than 50 pounds an acre. At, at most in one year, I think we lost about 150 pounds an acre. Just one comment, desiccated and swath canola harvested 14 days after treatment had lower green count than canola harvested seven days after treatment. So uh, if you waited just a little bit longer after the seven days, uh, we, we generally saw less green count uh, between seven and 14 days. Now, when we compare desiccants, Diquat was the most effective for desiccating pods and stems three to 10 days after treatment. Now the, the minimal harvest interval is seven days for, for Reglone or Diquat. And it was very consistent at reducing seed moisture. When we compared Sharpen and Glyphosate, it was not as effective at seven days after treatment compared to Diquat. If we waited till 10 to 14 days, then Sharpen and Glyphosate was, uh, did provide acceptable desiccation. Sharpen and Valor applied alone were less effective. 